Lester, Wushu Engineer. I just wanted to mention uh, right, or right in the beginning that we commissioned some artwork to celebrate this particular project, the Man Display project. And this artwork will be appearing on various items of merch in our store and on Redbubble. These are the two artworks that we had commissioned. If you're interested in owning something with this artwork on, uh, check out the Wushu Workshop store or Redbubble. Now I've built uh, a couple of folding spear projects um, over the years on this channel. The titanium folding long weapon platform is one of them and the mantis spear project is another. Both of them have uh, associated quick draw sheaths and are designed to be uh, carried as long weapons uh, carried as a, as a secondary even though they're long weapons. The most recent of these projects is the Mantis Spear project. It became apparent to me during the Mantis Spear build and test process that a smaller version, the Mantis Claw project, would be a much better application for the design. So I mentally shelved the Mantis Spear project and scheduled the Mantis Claw project for future development. However, I was stopped in my mental tracks by a viewer request that came through to me privately. I'd like to give this particular viewer credit because they contributed uh, quite a lot to the main design requirements for the project, as well as being responsible for contributing significantly to elements of the Mantis Blade's design, most notably the sheath. However, this particular viewer contacted me privately and so I will respect their anonymity. What I will say is that they are creating a doujinshi story video and needed some advice on the design of their female protagonist's secondary weapon. Now, please excuse my pronunciations uh, during this video. I'm no linguist, um, so excuse my pronunciation if I butcher words. Their main protagonist is a, approximately 1.6 meters tall, and her primary weapon is an assault rifle with limited spare ammo. And she carries a naginata as her secondary weapon. Now this is actually not without precedent and uh, is actually quite appropriate as uh, demonstrated by the historical Onamusha who were often portrayed as armed with the naginata. Again excuse my pronunciation but Onamusha refers to uh, female warriors in pre-modern Japan. Now, uh, as a weapon, a naginata, a long polearm weapon, may not seem intuitively to be the right kind of weapon uh, for a lighter, uh, smaller um, a fighter. But in actual fact, it, it really could very, and very, it really is in this case, because it gives, uh, it can give a considerable advantage in terms of, in terms of the leverage that one can generate behind cuts, and the massive range advantage over over others who may be armed with, uh, with shorter weapons. So quite appropriate in this case. However, since a normal Naginata is actually too long to carry around, may obstruct movement and, uh, and also may impede uh, our heroine as she is taking aim, um, my viewer proposed a folding Naginata with a quick draw sheath as a possible solution. My viewer named the folding Naginata Kanazuki, which I thought was actually pretty awesome. I do enjoy uh, anime. I remember watching and re-watching the kids section of the Betamax demo tape in the 1980s, which showed excerpts of various anime shows like Tekkerman. Also in the 1980s, I watched Warriors of the Wind, a, uh, a version of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind adapted for the Western market and it blew my mind. And of course, most folk from my generation grew up watching Robotech. So my viewer had me interested and invested <laughs> from the get-go. As an engineer though, I typically loathe giving advice without doing my due diligence. And in this case, I felt that it was necessary to do a complete design, prototyping and testing process before providing any kind of advice. So I apologize to my project list for my continued jockeying and neglect and I went straight on to designing and building Kanazuki which I chose to call the Mantis Blade for the purposes of this video and for our merch. 
a folding naginata with a quick draw sheath. Now, it is quite simple to build toys or wall hangers and call them weapons, as many other channels on YouTube do. However, um, as a martial artist, I have some uh, very stringent requirements for my weapon builds. They must be usable as weapons. They must be functional. A functional weapon is orders of magnitude more difficult to build than a toy because um, of a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, for new and exotic weapon, weapon designs and builds, they must provide some kind of functionality that is lacking in existing conventional weapon designs. Um, in other words, they must answer a design question that, has, that existing conventional designs can't answer. Um, in addition, their weight and ease, ease of handling must be optimized to make the weapon usable in the real world. It's absolutely no good if you've got this awesome looking weapon that you can't actually move around quickly, either because it's badly designed or because it's too heavy. Um, it, it, it just wouldn't function in the real world. Um, furthermore, with these weapons or a, a, a weapon design, it must be robust enough to withstand uh, the force and impact which it might endure during combat. It must also be relatively safe for the wielder to use, while simultaneously it must be capable of exerting debilitating or deadly levels of force against an opponent or otherwise stopping, incapacitating or neutralizing them in some way. And finally, a skilled weapon user should be able to rapidly adapt to the weapon's unique peculiarities and incorporate it into their fighting style or system without the need for extended periods of training. Now, the main chassis for the Mantis Blade was built previously as part of the Mantis Spear project. So I recommend that you refer to that video for the main engineering challenges and build processes associated with that with the, uh, the base Mantis chassis. However, the Mantis Blade project came with its own unique challenges, which were actually significantly more extreme than those encountered and overcome for the Mantis Spear project. Some might say that it was simply a matter of removing the final piece of the Mantis Spear and putting a blade on the end. Well, it's actually not that simple. In particular, one of the main problems that I had to face and overcome as part of the Mantis Blade project was the locking mechanisms. Because the impact force vectors were not linear along the length of the weapon, as they were in the Mantis Spear project, the Mantis Spear gravity locking mechanisms uh, were insufficient for the Mantis Blade. I thus had to design and build locking mechanisms, which I'll discuss in more detail later. In fact, there are, there are three of them, so three separate locking points, central locking point, a base locking point, and, and, and a final blade locking point. All three of them had to engage simultaneously and prevent any kind of structural shift in the weapon during use. I also designed the weapon with a composite blade, so that was another um, design challenge. I've touched on the use of composite blades in past videos, in particular in my Space Wolves Power Axe build. However, this project uh, required the design and construction of something more closely resembling a sword blade. Well, it was, a, it was a much thinner blade. It was also much longer. So those impact forces um, had to be resisted over a much longer uh, piece of material, which made it um, uh, a little bit more difficult. In addition, and the final major uh, design challenge that, that I faced during this build was the articulated weapon sheath and harness, which you, can, which you can see behind me over here. There were several additional requirements stipulated by the Dojinshi creator for the sheath and harness. They wanted enhanced connection points, including additional leg straps and a lever action uh, mantis blade retention mechanism to prevent it from falling out of the sheath. Some of these stipulations required some additional design to incorporate articulated joints into the harness uh, to facilitate ease of movement. So it wasn't just a simple matter of 
uh, getting something from eBay and slapping it onto the side. I actually had to design those uh, the, 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 sh the harness from scratch and then uh, put in various articulation points. Now, I, I am not actually set up as a build video channel, so I'm not going to show you the build process. What I might say is that uh, much of the time was spent designing the final product using CAD software, which is not a very exciting process to see on a video. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll quickly, I'll quickly talk through some of the Mantis Blade's uh, main features. So this is the Mantis, Mantis Blade when folded. Um, you'll notice that uh, it has various components. Uh, it, it has a blade, has a central, central section, uh, central lever arms, and these, uh, these open to extend the blade. And as it opens, uh, you'll notice, you might be able to see in the video, if I hold it a little bit closer to the camera, you, you might be able to notice a spring connected to a tendon. So, um, I have to be careful with the weapon because it's spring-loaded, so it, it, it wants to be deployed. It hungers. <laughs> it hungers for combat. So, um, this tendon is actually connected to, you'll be able to see it there, one of the uh, locking points. This is the central locking point. There is also a, a locking point at the blade, and there's a locking point, a point here at the base of the weapon. So I'm just going to let it uh, unfold and lock into place. As you can see, it locks, it locks into place, and there is the Naginata, ready for use. It has a, a set of small guards at the base of the blade, um, so it can be used, uh, which of course can be used as uh, guards on any polearm weapon I used. Um, if you're up against uh, someone with uh, another long weapon, or even uh, or even against uh, people with uh, um, so, uh, with melee sidearms like swords to uh, prevent weapons from running up the length of the shaft. Um, you'll notice that the blade as well, uh, the composite blade, is reinforced along the side with a two millimeter thick titanium uh, spinal sandwich, you could call it, um, on either side of the blade. This reinforcement was required in order to um, strengthen the blade sufficiently to resist the kind of impact forces that, that you incur when using a polearm weapon like this. So for a shorter weapon, like a sword, those impact forces are much reduced um, just because of the biomechanics of the wielder, which is dampening a lot of that impact force. Um, and also because you're not getting as much leverage behind the blade. So um, for a number of reasons, those impact forces are lower um, than you would encounter on a polearm. So, so the blade had to be reinforced. Yeah, so what I might do now is quickly show you the sheath. So the sheath is designed to be worn firstly around the waist so it's got a waist strap or belt and then it has a couple of leg straps there are articulation points at various locations along here that are designed to allow the the whole sheath to move freely uh, at, with the movement of the leg without being restrictive or um, getting in the way and you'll notice from some of the footage that, that uh, I'll show you later that actually there's very little in the way of impeding movement of a person wearing this sheath. So what I might demonstrate now quickly is um, donning the sheath. Need to 
connect the, the belt and attach at the leg. And then when in place, you'll see that my leg can move quite freely and the sheath doesn't actually impede my movement at all. It's a bit chilly here at the moment, so I might just put my top back on. One thing that I will mention with the sheath, and it's something that didn't really occur to me until I had built it and started doing some tests with it, is the potential for the sheath to be used as a shield. So in, um, in combat, uh, if I was up against uh, someone in combat, this can act as a secondary shield. Not necessarily just protecting my leg, but I can actually draw it up and protect part of my body as well. Uh, in addition, it became apparent as well that if the shield was treated with more robust materials, in this case it's just, uh, I've built it out of uh, a framework of wood with a, poly a polypropylene sheet um, as the, main, the, the front and the back cover. If this was made out of more robust material, it could actually be very effective as a small, a small shield that isn't worn on the arm but on the leg. And um, if, I, if it was treated ballistically, so if it had some form of ballistic protection built in, it could actually offer uh, some level of protection um, for a, a much smaller person, but potentially the, um, the heroine of the Dojinshi story, um, actually kneeling down, uh, she could actually potentially take at least some cover behind behind the sheath if it was treated ballistically. Um, but uh, uh, and I, I, I'll I'll demonstrate that in in some of the uh, later segments, or I'll demonstrate the potential of what what could be done with it in some of the later segments. So as you can see from me moving around here, simple movement is pretty free. Doesn't inhibit uh, doesn't inhibit any kind of movement. So I've just put the mantis blade back into its sheath and I'll, I'll demonstrate the draw process quickly here. Although it is demonstrated later, this, um, this is the retention strap that uh, my viewer recommended I try. And I did experiment with it. And it's actually pretty good because it's a very large and easy to find and access and operate mechanism to release the mantis blade. One of the one of the refinements I had to make was to cinch the mechanism to prevent it from from uh, over closing. So in other words from flipping past and uh, and then interfering with the mantis blade being drawn. But other than that it's a really workable design. So to release the mantis blade I'm going to um, open that uh, open that uh, that retention mechanism, releasing the handle, and then the mantis blade is deployed, ready to be used. So quite a simple operation. Uh, in addition, the uh, stowing of the mantis blade, so folding it up and putting it uh, putting it away, is uh, it, it's quite it's quite a simple process. 
but um, it, it does obviously take longer than, uh, than drawing it. And that was one of the design compromises that had to be made. Either you make a weapon quick and easy to draw um, with compromises on uh, it being stowed away, or you make a weapon easy to put away and then there'll be compromises in terms of, uh, in terms of ease of access and, uh, and, and rapidity of, of, um, of access as well. So there's, there's always a little bit of give and take. And in this case, I opted for, a, uh, opted for maximum speed and ease on the draw. But I'll put in a separate little video clip of me folding the Naginata, uh, folding the uh, Mantis Blade up and putting it back in the sheet, in the sheet to show you how long that would take. And so, without further ado, I'll go on to some of the tests that I did. First of all, with the, uh, the composite blade, prior actually, prior to it being reinforced with titanium, I did some cutting tests just with the blade itself in my hand. Um, and uh, I'll show you what those looked like. And, and then I did some fun uh, bottle cutting tests uh, with the full Mantis blade. Uh, so some quick draws, uh, some uh, at least one cut straight from the draw, so a draw cut, and uh, and a couple of other fun little bits and pieces. <laughs> wow. wow. There you go. Again, no damage whatsoever to the composite blade. Again, no damage whatsoever to the composite blade. So you got a pretty good, nasty cut in there. Oh, there you go. It's quite a nasty cut into the rib and no damage to the sword. The blade, I should say. Yeah. Wow. A very nasty cut there. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, in conclusion, overall, the weapon's performance was excellent uh, and exceeded my expectations. However, it should always be borne in mind that certain aspects of a conventional Naginata's design and performance had to be compromised in order to make the Mantis blade able to be folded into such a small package and still be wieldable by the Dujinshi heroine. 
The chiefest of these compromises is structural integrity. It's not possible to make a folding weapon as robust as a fixed weapon. Folding weapons typically rely on joints and locking mechanisms, which are always going to be weak points in the design. In the case of the Mantis blade, I have done my best to minimize these weaknesses through clever design, but it could never compete in terms of robustness against a uh, similar fixed blade Naginata built using similar materials. So of course there's always the little caveat there that uh, we, we're talking like for like in terms of materials and construction methods. Uh, a, a folding version is always going to have weaknesses that a fixed version does not. Another compromise in terms of the design is the composite blade uh, design to reduce overall weapon weight. Although the composite blade is perfectly functional and extremely strong, as demonstrated in the video, it just cannot compete in terms of robustness against a conventional, monolithic, much heavier steel blade. In all cases, I've tried to minimize the negative impact of the necessary compromises that had to be made. I did this by putting the design through the ringer in an intensive CAD and physical design process in order to realize the fully foldable quick draw Naginata. In addition, the advantages of a Naginata that can be worn as a secondary weapon can be quick drawn and can, and even can, be, and can even be used to perform draw cuts cannot be underestimated. It would be of no benefit to our Dujinshi heroine to have an extremely robust conventional Naginata hanging on her wall at home because she cannot carry it effectively into battle. Better the weapon that you have with you than the one you have to leave at home. Uh, in addition, folding the Mantis blade is a three-stage process. So I have to disengage each of the three locking points in order. Uh, it's not instantaneous. However, tools are not required to fold it, so you can do it by hand. This was a conscious design decision and another of the compromises I made in order to emphasize the most desirable features of this machine. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the most desirable traits for this were rapid deployment and stable locking. This meant that folding the Mantis blade and stowing it in its sheath takes some care and time, but can still be accomplished in only a few seconds. Another aspect that needs to be mentioned is that running and sprinting can be a problem while wearing the Mantis blade because of the rhythmic movement. My recommendation would be for the Dojinshi heroine to sling her assault rifle over her shoulder and hold the Mantis blade handle as she runs if she needs to cover distance at speed. There are also some safety issues associated with this weapon. Um, the weapon can't be idly drawn out of the sheath and then just, uh, just allowed, just held there um, unless, unless care is taken. The spring-loaded deployment uh, tendon can cause the weapon to deploy in an uncontrolled manner. The unfolding can accelerate under the combined forces of the spring and gravity if carelessly tipped down which might cause the, the wielder a toe, or might cost the wielder a toe or two. So some care needs to be taken. It's a weapon that really should be deployed in action and should be deployed with conviction. So ready, ready for the attack. In addition, regular application of uh, Teflon low friction coating is required to compensate for the use of uh, some composite plastics in the blade construction that, that may have higher frictional co associated higher frictional coefficients um, in the blade. Um, so this is just to compensate for any kind of friction during cuts. Uh, one of the things that I noticed when I was using uh, the, uh, the Mantis blade was that um, the tolerances on the joints meant that some of the parts can open momentarily. So in particular, the central sections can open momentarily and pinch skin during use. So enhanced high tolerance machining for these parts 
may potentially reduce or eliminate this structural play, but thin gloves may be, nece may be a necessary additional precaution to prevent pinching the skin of the hands. Uh, you'll also notice uh, that there's a, there are a lot of nuts and bolts sticking out the sides of this particular prototype. Because this is a prototype, I used off-the-shelf nuts and bolts um, that stick out the sides. An improvement would be the use of high-end embedded fasteners, as my uh, mate John Chalk always encourages me to use, but which I never have any of in my workshop. So uh, perhaps down the line I need to invest in uh, some supplies, some additional supplies for my workshop. The base and central locking points function perfectly. However, the, uh, the blade locking points of so this particular locking point is a little bit finicky because it occasionally interferes with um, the, the, the spring because it shares the same attachment point. And that may occasionally cause the blade not to lock into place during deployment. This is not a significant problem uh, because the mechanics of the blade joint mean that um, the old gravity lock mechanism of the mantis blade of the mantis spear or the mantis blade chassis um, is engaged when cutting because of the uh, if I hold it like this because the the force vector will typically be be at uh, at right angles or at some angle to the edge of the blade um, that forces actually actually forces this joint to lock because of the uh, the mechanics of this joint you might be, you might be able to see in the video so it's no big deal and in, in actual fact that the the cutting force the, the the cutting impact actually will in most cases cause the blade to lock um, as well cause the the locking mechanism to engage however further design and engineering could be performed to further optimize these locking points as demonstrated in the video the sheath and articulated harness work surprisingly well as a leg mounted shield um, and as I mentioned, the use of tougher materials and even ballistic resistant materials in the sheath could enhance this usability, but it'll be at the cost of some additional weight. However, I feel that the benefits of having a ballistic shield mounted on the leg may outweigh the disadvantage of additional weight. Uh, in addition, better steel or even exotic metals in the composite core um, uh, could be used in the composite core. The steel core that I used um, in this composite blade was hardened steel from a recycled, uh, uh, an old, rusty, recycled, cheap um, hand saw. Uh, more specialized materials here could yield far greater structural integrity for the entirety of the blade, could uh, yield better edge retention and better cutting potential. Perhaps uh, even using specialized amorphous metals or specially heat treated and tempered steel. Um, a one millimeter thick core is, uh, of the specialized material would, would be all that would be required there. Now this was an extremely challenging, highly engaging and really exciting project to work on. I had buckets of fun doing this, buckets of fun building this and testing it, although there were challenging times. I hope you enjoy seeing this awesome weapon being born and taking its first steps. And uh, I'll see you all again next time. Cheers.